Hey guys, I still suck at intros, but anyways, my name is Lillian Shauna and I review books and draw occasionally. So as May is coming to an end, so is Asian Heritage Month and I decided to participate in the Asian Readathon Challenge hosted by Cindy from Read with Cindy. I'm also going to link Cindy's video for the challenge in the description box below. I managed to finish the challenge by reading four books, which I will be giving spoiler free reviews for in this video. So the purpose of the Asian Readathon Challenge is to read more books that are Asian inspired by Asian authors or are influenced by Asian cultures. There were four parts to the challenge and one optional part to read Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng, except I didn't do that part because we're in a quarantine and I couldn't get my hands on the ebook from my library, but I did manage to finish four parts of the challenge, so there's that. So for the first part of the challenge, we were asked to read any book by an Asian author, and for that I chose to read When Dimple Met Rishi by Sandhya Menon. Sandhya Menon is an Indian American author who is known for her YA romance novels, and I was in the mood for a good rom-com, so I got this book from my online library. I really liked this book and gave it 3.5 stars. When Dimple Met Rishi is a book about this Indian girl, Dimple, who just wants to code and win this coding competition at a conference before she goes to college. Her parents, however, wanted to get married to a guy and be more interested in boys in general. Rishi is an Indian guy who is looking for love and his parents set him up with Dimple, and he goes to the conference to meet her. However, Dimple has no idea that her parents have set her up with Rishi, and of course, when they meet, Rishi makes a joke about her being his future wife and Dimple, not having a clue who the stranger is, throws her iced coffee in his face, which is also the scene that I decided to draw here. This book was super cute and we got to follow Dimple and Rishi through various obstacles and see if they can overcome them and be together. I really liked how Dimple refused to change her personality or be someone she wasn't in order to make others comfortable, and how Rishi liked her for her. The storyline was super cute, the ending was adorable, and overall, it was just a good read. So the second part of the challenge is to read a book featuring an Asian character or written by an Asian author who you can relate to, and for this I chose to read There's Something About Sweetie, also by Sandhya Menon. I chose this book because 1. It features Sweetie who is a South Asian main character, and 2. I can relate to the author because Sandhya Menon is a woman and so am I. Also because this was one of the only books featuring an Asian character that was available at the online library. I also really liked this book and gave it 3.5 stars. There's Something About Sweetie follows an Indian girl named Sweetie who is the star of her track team, but despite being athletic and winning races, Sweetie's mom is concerned about her weight and whether Sweetie can get a guy because of it. Meanwhile, Ashish Patil, star of his high school basketball team, is trying to get over his ex-girlfriend who cheated on him. When Sweetie decides to work on her self-confidence, she asks Ashish out, and they start dating, each for their own reasons. We follow Sweetie on her journey to realize her self-worth and see how her relationship with her mom grows. We also get to see if Ashish does get over his ex and possibly develops feelings for Sweetie. I thought this book gave a really accurate insight into how a teenage girl thinks and has concerns over her weight and problems that she would face from family members that feel the need to give their input on the topic. I also love Sweetie's whole storyline where she works to get self-confidence and how it didn't completely rely on a guy. There were parts of the story that I found kind of unbelievable and unrealistic, but I don't really read rom-coms for how realistic they are anyway, so it was fine. I did not have the time to draw any art for this book, so I just kind of stuck to drawing art for two of the books I read because this When Dimple Met Rishi piece of art took quite a lot of time to finish. I thought that the characters were pretty accurate to how high schoolers actually are, and the situations that they were put in were very entertaining to read about. For example, I remember that the dates that Sweetie and Ashish went on were kind of curated by Ashish's parents and they had to go to a temple one day, which was super interesting to read about. The juxtaposition of how Sweetie was pretty okay of showcasing her culture and wearing traditional Indian clothing and going to a temple whereas Ashish kind of found those things to be kind of unappealing was also something that I found interesting. 
And Ashish only started thinking that those aspects of his culture were cool when he saw how much Sweetie liked them. I thought that Sandhya Menon did a great job of showcasing character growth for both characters in the novel, and overall would recommend this book. The fourth part of the Asian Readathon Challenge is to read a book recommended by an Asian. And yeah, I'm going to talk about the fourth part of the challenge next because the book I read for the third part is my favorite. So we're going to save that for last. For this part, I read Wicked Fox by Kat Cho, which was recommended by Chloe from Books with Chloe. And I'm going to put the link where she recommended that book in the description box below as well. I did draw some fan art for this book because I just thought the premise was so cool, except I didn't include my process for drawing it in this video because I was experimenting and my first two attempts were so bad I just can't show them to anybody and I ended up caving in and doing some cartoony art instead, but the point is it's over on my Instagram if you want to see the final result. Anyways, I gave this book 3 stars. It was good, but I don't particularly like books that are insta-lovey. Wicked Fox is a fantasy romance novel that follows Gu Mi Young, who is secretly a Gumi Ho, which is this nine-tailed fox from Korean mythology that eats the souls of men to survive. She does not like killing though, so she only kills men that are evil. One day, she saves the life of An Ji Hoon, who is a human boy from a Dokebi, which is a goblin in Korean mythology, which she's not supposed to do. By the way, if I'm mispronouncing any names or terms, I am so sorry. I looked up each of these words in a pronunciation guide, and I hope I'm pronouncing them correctly. So sorry in advance. Anyways, the story takes off from there, and we follow Mi Young and Ji Hoon on this journey where they fall in love. But to me, it felt like it all happened really quickly. I do understand that this book has been compared to K-dramas before though. And I've seen my fair share of K-dramas, so if I'm evaluating it from that standpoint, having the main characters fall in love relatively quickly would be normal. Things that I wish the book had, or that were missing in my opinion, include more focus on the mythology. I would have loved to learn more about the Gumiho and their lore, and there were bits of it in the novel, but I just love mythology so much and that I would have liked more in-depth information, which I think would have been nice. Also, this book is the kind of book where a lot of the obstacles the characters face stem from a lack of communication, which is again on brand if you're evaluating it from a K-drama perspective, but I personally don't read a lot of books where things could have been easily resolved if people just talked, you know? Overall, I thought the book did a great job of showing aspects of Korean culture, the whole mythology aspect of it was amazing, but I found myself wishing that it had more realism between the relationships of the characters. The last book I read that met the third part of the Asian Readathon challenge, which was to read a book featuring an Asian character or written by an Asian author who was different from you, was Steel Crow Saga by Paul Kruger. This was also my favorite out of all the books that I read, and I gave it 4.5 stars. Steel Crow Saga is a fantasy novel with all Asian-inspired characters written, and I chose this book because the author is Filipino-American and I'm not. The book follows four characters with a fifth point of view also in there. There's Tala, who is from the country of Sanbuna, which is inspired by the Philippines. Sanbuna was recently at war with the country of Tomoda, which had previously colonized Sanbuna. Tala is a soldier who, after beating Tomoda's forces, is tasked with guarding Prince Jamuro to claim the Tomoda throne to negotiate peace talks. However, a Shang princess named Shulan again, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing any names, hires a thief from the country of Jongsun named Li to deliver Jimuro to the Shang Emperor in order to become the next ruler of Shang. Shui Lan is a detective, by the way. All four characters' journeys are entangled with each other and they find, despite their individual goals, there is a common evil that is threatening all of them. 
So Jongsun, Shang, and Sunbuna all hate Tomoda because at some point in time, Tomoda has occupied all these countries. Jongsun is based off of Korea, Shang is based off of China, Sunbuna is based off of the Philippines, and Tomoda is based off of Japan. There is one more country to haul, which I'm pretty sure is based off of India, but there aren't any main characters from there featured in the book. This book also has amazing LGBTQ plus rep, and I think that you could only call one person out of the four main characters as straight. The book features a relationship between two of the main female characters and a relationship between another female and male main character. There is also some trans rep in this book, which I was pleasantly surprised by. I really enjoyed this book's magic system, which consists of shade pacting, which is when you make a pact with an animal and you basically house the animal's soul in you and it kind of becomes a part of you, and in turn you basically make an agreement with the animal to do something that it wants. You can then call that animal by name whenever you want and a kind of magical soul energy version of it appears, except it's usually bigger and stronger and harder to defeat, and it will listen to you. The next form of magic is metal pacting, which only the Timotonese are supposed to be able to do, which is when you put a bit of your soul in metal and then you can control it. Last is the hex bolts, which, and this was a cool part of the story, only female soldiers or women in general of Dahal are taught, which is when you basically use your soul to create energy and send it out in bolts. I've heard this book be described as Pokemon meets Full Metal Alchemist, and I agree. I loved all the characters so much. Lee is hilarious and is kind of like the comedic relief in the novel. She just has a comeback for everything. Julan is crazy smart, and she's more book smart than anything, so seeing her team up with Lee, who is more street smart due to her time as a thief, was a ton of fun. They're definitely a formidable pair. I think Jamero's character arc was my favorite because it really mirrored Zuko's character arc from Avatar The Last Airbender. Overall, I do think that Tala is my favorite though, and she's the one that I'm drawing right now. Her shade is a crow named Beaky, which is the cutest name for a crow ever. I loved seeing Tala's and Beaky's bond as they fight, and canon, Tala is the strongest and toughest characters of the four. I firmly believe that if she was in a one-on-one -on -one fight with anyone, she would win. And it was funny seeing her win in every one of her fights except the ones where multiple people attacked her at once. Another part of the book that I liked were all the descriptions about the countries, its people, and their cultures, which were definitely Asian-inspired. The author really went in depth to describe various kinds of food, which were interesting to read about and made me really hungry. It was also pretty obvious which his favorite food was. Despite this book being amazing, there were a few things that weren't my favorite. So the romances in this book were awesome, but the entire story actually occurs over about three days, so it was a bit hard for me to believe that the characters were as invested in each other romantically after such a short period of time, and that their investment in each other was enough to overcome any racist prior assumptions they had previously. Also, this book left me with more questions about the magic system than answers. Don't get me wrong, I love the magic, but some things occurred that were left unexplained. Which some people like, but I'm the kind of reader that likes in-depth explanations. Lastly, I wish the author went more in-depth about the people of Dahal, because the fact that only the women were allowed to learn how to use hex bolts is so cool, and I wanted to know more about that. Overall, this book is fantastic. I think I read somewhere that the author isn't planning a sequel, which I hope is untrue because I need to know more about these characters. This book had excellent Asian representation, it had LGBTQ plus representation, and as my sister would say, the author drank a lot of respect woman juice because the ladies in this book are freaking amazing. I think I'll be drawing more art for this book later, which you should be able to see in my Instagram, but I probably won't film it. Alright, that's all I have for you guys, so you can see my final art at the end, and after that, I'll be showing some of my favorite quotes from Steel Crow Saga. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and subscribe if you want. Until the next video, bye guys!